All right, so this is a brief tutorial on using PE Bear for your static malware analysis. PE Bear is a really, really good tool to have in your malware analysis toolkit. So we're just gonna go over a couple of the features and a couple things you're gonna find within the actual interface for your static analysis. All right, so PE Bear is designed for analysis of portable executable files. However, not limited to. And can also be used for common Windows executables and dynamic linked libraries. It allows you to inspect the file headers, sections, imports, exports, and much, much more. Giving you critical insights into the files, structures, and behaviors. So when you open a file in PE Bear, you'll notice a clean and intuitive interface. You'll find things like the file header. This section shows metadata about the executable, link, the machine type, timestamp, and entry point. You have an optional header which contains essential runtime data like the size of the image, subsystem information, and entry point details. You have a sections table where you can see the different sections of the PE file such as text, so the code, data, global variables, and RSRC, your resources. Each section has details like virtual addresses, size and permissions. Your imports table lists external functions and APIs that the file depends on, often a treasure trove of information about potential malicious behavior. Your exports table is where you can find functions or symbols that the file makes available to other programs. This is useful for analyzing your dynamic link libraries. And you also have a resource tree which displays embedded resources such as icons, strings, or even malware payloads. So PE Bear excels in static analysis because it allows you to detect anomalies. So checking for unusual timestamps, strange entry points, and mismatched section characteristics. Analyze your dependencies, which is reviewing imported functions or libraries to identify potential malicious behaviors like key logging or network communications. Inspect sections, so that's looking for code injection, packed sections, or encrypted data stored in non-standard sections. And extract your resources to locate hidden executables or embedded payloads in the resource tree. So when looking at the file header section, you can see machine type, which tells us the architecture that this file is built for, commonly x86 or x64. So pay attention to the timestamp as unusually old or futuristic timestamps can be a red flag. In the sections table, each section is listed with its name, size, and permissions. So you can look for oddities like sections with executable permissions, but strange names or overly large resource sections, which may indicate obfuscation of hidden data. The imports table is one of the more valuable ones as it shows all the external APIs. The malware calls, such as network functions or file system operations. So suspicious functions like create remote thread or virtual allocation can hint at a malware's intentions. Now don't forget to look through your strings section as this can have plain text that you can read and interpret and find suspicious text in there. In our case, such as keylogger or external IP addresses or web addresses for a C2 server. Now don't forget to look through your strings section as 
This can have plain text that you can read and interpret and find suspicious text in there. In our case, such as Keylogger or external IP addresses or web addresses or a C2 server. Now don't forget to look through your strings section as this can have plain text that you can read and interpret and find suspicious text in there. In our case, such as Keylogger or 